If you're the person who says, I don't want to pay for Windows, I don't want to look at the activation message, and I don't want to spend effort learning Linux, you're in luck today. Let's find out if the open source Windows can be the answers for you. I was shocked when I first found out about the existence of open source Windows, and I will be looking at two of them in this video. One of them is totally free called React OS, which is built from ground up using Windows NT kernel. And the other is called Atlas OS, which is a stripped down Windows 10, but it requires users to have a proper Windows license to use, which is aiming to be the gaming performance system. Of course, I'm gonna start with a free one because I'm cheap. Chinese people, you are cheap, like it's crazy. Several things to mention before diving in. This system is not another Linux distribution. It is purely based on Windows NT kernel. You don't have to worry about learning anything about Linux. It's also developed under the open source license, so it's completely legal to use without paying anything. Just click on take me to download here so you don't have to spend money. But be mindful that it is still in alpha stage and the Windows kernel they implement is quite ancient. So they can't promise everything will work and security yet. But I found nowhere on their website that says it is not for gaming. So let's see if you're truly in luck. The blocker came right after I download the ISO file because after I put it on Ventoy and tried to boot it up, I realized the default download option is 32-bit ISO. There is nowhere on their homepage, release note, or wiki mentioning that. Instead, they have all the fancy words like, this is the true Windows-based system. You can do whatever you do on Windows here. And the shiny new release has come. I had to go into their FAQ page and search for the keyword to find out why they don't support 64 bits after that. But no worries, I did see they have 64 bits ISO on their nightly build page. But first, that ISO is only 50 megabytes and it could only give me the blue screen after I ditched Windows completely four years ago, which means it is truly an authentic Windows-based system. But joking aside, please save yourself some time to avoid this system if you want gaming, or at least wait for them to announce the 64-bit support. I bet they will make it front and center. Let's turn to Atlas OS, which looks more promising here. Again, I want to clarify some definitions before we start. Atlas itself is an open source project, but it doesn't mean it is free to use. Yes, a lot of open source software are free of charge, but open source only means the source code is made freely available for possible modification and redistribution, not the software itself. And on its legal page, it explicitly says that you have to obtain the legal license of Windows to use it. None of the ISO is activated, so be aware of that. As a cheap person myself, I knew my second-hand laptop came with the legal windows when I purchased it, so I should not be worried about trying it out. The installation process is exactly the same as the regular Windows 10. After deleting all my Linux partitions, it started right away, and the installation was super fast. I regretted that I forgot to set up a timer but the feeling is that it was even faster than a lot of Linux distributions installation. I was moving the chair from the background and came back to find out it was done. It must be less than a minute between I turn off the camera and turn it back on. After reboot, it was the initial setup process. All I needed to do was to choose the language and create a local user and a password with three security questions. No annoying advertisement ID. No Cortana, who can always manage to scare me whenever she speaks up for the first time. No internet configuration, and no OneDrive or integration with Microsoft account. After that, I was able to enter the system. There was some initial setup with the scripts automatically popped up. No need to touch anything here. The scripts were running about 1 minute and 40 seconds. To so combine it with the installation time, it should be less than 3 minutes for the whole system to completely set up. Given it is a proper Windows, I was surprised at how much junk the Atlas team can strip down. Good job. After the second boot up, let's explore the system. First things first, 
the system has only the bare minimum feature. It has no internet configure, no common software or driver installed. I can see why. If you just want to play games on it, you can install the NVIDIA driver inside the Atlas folder without connecting to the internet, which means without any additional stuff, the system can run at its ultimate performance without extra background tasks. But that is not completely feasible as you will see later. However, as a Linux evangelist myself, I'm totally on board with the idea that users should be able to decide what they want or don't want on their system and tinker with it as long as they have the legal license to use it. Next, I installed NVIDIA driver through the NV Cleanstall program and Red Dead Redemption 2. But the game was lagging a lot, even when I can see the NVIDIA encoder showing up on OBS when I record the screen. Clearly, something is missing. So I enable the Wi-Fi in the configuration folder and use the snappy driver installer to install some drivers. Because the instruction says the less is better, so I only selected the ones that related to CPU, network card, and audio. I left all third-party ones like Asus and Logitech out. During the installation, I saw the second blue screen of the weekend. It succeeded after the second try restarted the system, and the game was working. I ran a benchmark on it right after that. With full screen, 120Hz, and ultra texture, I was getting an average of 48.95 framework per second minimum of 34, and maximum of 67 depending on the scenes. I also give it a go on the same settings on my Fedora Linux I set up on the SSD enclosure. Just bear in mind that the whole system along with the game are running inside this external drive which is connected to a USB 3.0 port, so it is not completely an apples to apple comparison. I can sense the game is taking longer to load on Linux than the native NVMe. The FPS I'm getting here is a higher maximum of 74 and lower minimum of 22 with an average of 47.4. So I'm wondering if this is due to some reading lags produced a dip following by a spike of the frame rate. I myself couldn't notice any glitches while watching the whole benchmark video on both of these systems with my bare eyes. It could still mean that you would have a smoother gaming experience on Atlas with a 3% average higher frame rate compared to Linux, which is surprisingly great. And sorry guys, I don't plan to use Windows anytime soon, so this is where I'm gonna end the benchmark. I also took this chance to test the USB driver I just installed by updating my Sigma lens firmware because like other major camera and lens companies, Sigma doesn't provide any Linux support and the Macs I got from my company are blocking all the USB reading functions. The update works great. There is another issue with Atlas I found before we can end this video. Even though this laptop has Windows Home Edition license baked in, with all the fancy wording in the legal section on their GitHub page, the system is still complaining about the activation sometimes. It says it can't connect to the activation server. And when I checked the settings, I found out this system is based on Windows Enterprise, which is probably the reason it is not activated automatically. So I secretly joined their Discord channel and did a search. People with the same issue were told that it won't affect the day-to-day -day use when this happens. So apparently you can still use it for free when you don't have the Windows Enterprise license. But you have to bear with the message from time to time. There you have it, a little detour from my regular Linux content. I hope you like it. Let me know in the comment below if it is tempting enough for you to ditch Linux and try out Atlas and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.